terrifying moment pilot flying Meghan and Harry to Sydney is forced to abort landing with just seconds to spare in a near miss with another aircraft still on the runway. This is the terrifying moment that plane carrying the Duke and Duchess of Sussex back to Australia today was caught up in an in-flight drama as it had to abort its landing. Seconds from touchdown, the Qantas charter flight, a Boeing 737, pulled up from the runway at Sydney Airport. Its pilot, Nigel Rosser, explained over the Tannoy system that another plane on the runway had been slow to roll and the two aircraft were too close. He explained the decision was made to abort the landing. The aircraft eventually touched down successfully after circling the city for a second time. Captain Rosser said, there was an aircraft on the runway that was a little bit slow to roll, unfortunately hadn't cleared the runway. We were too close, so the decision was made to abort the landing. It was what we call a missed approach. Earlier, the pregnant Duchess of Sussex dazzled in a green and white cotton designer dress as she and her husband met with Tonga's Prime Minister and his deputy in the latest stage of their marathon 16-day royal tour. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle dropped by the St. George government buildings in the country's capital Nukualofa for an early morning call on Akilai Zipohiva, Deputy Semizi Lafukia Sika in the cabinet. The mother-to-be was wearing a $1,595. Pound 881 slash 1122 US dollars, striped print dress by Australian born fashion designer Martin Grant, brushing off the minor fashion faux pas she made when she arrived in Tonga day earlier in a striking red dress. The Duchess, 37, still had the label hanging from her self portrait dress as she walked along a red carpet to the sounds of local singers wearing grass skirts at Fuamatu Airport in Nukualofa on Thursday. The couple were also met by more than 50 civil servants wearing red and black shirts and traditional outfits as they entered the St. George government buildings for the meeting, most of which was held in private. One child held a sign saying free hugs which drew a smile from Meghan after she spotted it. The couple then took the lift to meet the Prime Minister, with Prince Harry asking did you enjoy last night? The entertainment was very good. He was referring to a display of traditional Tongan entertainment after a formal dinner with King Tupu VI. The Duke and Duchess were later garlanded with necklaces made from Fa and Pu A Tonga flowers as they arrived at the Fanelua Center to celebrate Tongan youth and culture. The royals each sat on throne-like chairs in the middle of the room where they were presented with the necklaces, before Princess Angelica gave a speech after a prayer was read. The princess described Prince Harry and Meghan as an inspiration to the youth of the Commonwealth as they were shining a light on youth empowerment. Your visit today draws attention to the fundamentals of today's youth, youth leadership, youth empowerment and addressing the social, economic and environmental challenges of our region, she said. She added the royal couple's visit to the South Pacific. What Captain James Cook had described as the Friendly Islands, was inspiring the Tongan youth to be the best they can be and noted the tour was the ultimate diplomacy. The Queen's tour of Tonga in 1953 had been the historical highlight in relations between Tonga and Britain, the princess added in her speech. Prince Harry and Meghan also joined with the princess and Prince Ada in being shown locally made products which included traditional mats and tapa cloth and carvings and bracelets made from whale bone and wood. The couple were each presented with a tevla, an outfit added onto clothing, outside the center, which they proudly wore. The tevla signifies Tongan respect to higher ranks. The couple then met with local traders and craftsmen with Prince Harry appearing to do a little dance as the Masani group of singers and dancers performed island music and songs. The Duke and Duchess were also handed a picture of the royal Tongan motif, Fata O Tui Tongan. They said they will put it in their home, art artisan Ili Lousy said. The Duchess then made a quick dress change as she and her husband continued their official royal engagements in Tonga. Meghan slipped into a blue $595, pound 326-418 US dollars. Veronica Beard dress as the pair attended the dedication of two forest areas to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy at Tupu College. My wife and I are so pleased to be here today to mark the dedication of not one but two forest areas to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy initiative, which started in 2015 in honor of my grandmother's lifetime of service to the Commonwealth, Prince Harry said in a speech at the college.
Tonga is leading by example and understands deeply the impact of environmental changes because they directly affect these islands. Planting trees and conserving forests helps us in so many ways. It is a simple but effective way to restore and repair our environment, clean the air, protect habitat and enhance our health and well-being. The Duchess of Sussex was left in stitches as she and her husband were serenaded with a song about mosquitoes at the college. The Tupu College Boys Choir sung a comedy riff complete with flying actions and buzzing noises to welcome the couple to the forest. The aim of the song was to frighten off any mosquitoes that might be buzzing around. Before they left Tonga, the Duke and Duchess were driven to the royal palace for an audience with King Tupu VI and his wife Queen Nana Zipuau. The couple entered the wooden whitewashed palace and spent around 15 minutes inside with Tonga's royals. Prince Harry had changed into a suit following his excursion to the rainforest but Meghan was still in her blue Veronica beard shirt dress. The Duke and Duchess signed the visitor's book before they left and then posed outside with the King and Queen for photographers. They also shook hands with the Tongan ruler and his wife, Meghan, noticeably curtsying to the Queen. Tomorrow. The Royals will watch the Invictus Games wheelchair basketball final and then the closing ceremony of the Games which were started by Prince Harry. Tonga was the third country the Royals have visited on their first tour as a married couple, after traveling to Australia and Fiji.